I love counting down to things. In May, we are in a particular season of countdowns. This isn't Advent or looking ahead to the brighter days in the midst of midwinter, but rather a time of anticipation for many in academic settings. It is springtime and soon the end of another school year. When I was in elementary school and then high school, I remember counting down in my planner or on a calendar the days until summer vacation. There was no looking back, just on to that freedom from the routine, being able to sleep in, go to sleepovers in the middle of the week, go swimming in the middle of the day, all sorts of things that I would get to do that school got in the way of. And of particular importance to me was freedom from bedtimes. No parent knocking on the door to call lights out and then having to pretend I had gone to sleep. I have been in school settings for most of my life now, from age 5 to 18 for primary and secondary school, and then from 18 to 22 for my undergraduate studies. And now, for the past eight years, I have been in a series of graduate programs. That means I have spent more than three quarters of my life in some sort of educational program. That is a lot of annual countdowns to the end of the school year. If I continually anticipate the end of the year, why do I keep going back for more? Sure, through high school, I didn't have a lot of choice in the matter, but after that, I chose to go back another 12 times. The truth of the matter is that I have for the most part always enjoyed school. My high school years left a lot to be desired. But even in the midst of all of the pieces of high school I didn't like, I really enjoyed the learning. So what am I counting down to each year? My focus on the end moment of these experiences that I seem to like so much. Because I am approaching another end point. I am graduating from seminary this month. I have had my countdown timer on my phone for months. And those days have ticked down. It is time to end another educational experience. And I'm really excited about this ending. This is a threshold moment. I think that I have actually been counting down to thresholds all these years. Not only the fun of a break afterward, but the culmination of experiences and the gaining enough momentum to cross that threshold into something new. There is something exciting about stepping into new territory, the unknown, the unstructured. But there is also something a bit terrifying about it. I've more often than not had my next semester mapped out far in advance for me. I've known what I was reading, when I was going to be in class, and therefore had big areas of my time and attention focused thus creating boundaries for the rest of what I might do with my time. As I look ahead to what comes next, there is that big job category for me that will definitely map out a big chunk of my time. But I've been working while in school for many years. The piece I am thinking about more is what to do with the rest of that time. Do I need to do anything in particular? What might it mean to have unscheduled hours in the day? To just be more often throughout the week? There is a certain amount of anxiety in this sort of freedom to me. What if I waste it? What if I stop reading now that I don't have someone assigning me things to read? What if I experience boredom? And here is a space that I find myself reflecting on, around what freedom might mean in our overworked and overscheduled world. I am not sure I know what it means to not have a next thing on my to-do list, what it feels like any more to have nothing else to do when I end the day. I certainly know what procrastination feels like, that feeling of what I should be doing, but I am not. But I do not remember the last time I thought to myself, I don't have anything to do today. Perhaps that isn't the goal of freedom either, the thing to count down to, to be bored, to be unscheduled. 
Thresholds are also places that mark one experience from the next. They are places where a transformation occurs, achieving enough inertia to move into a new state of being. As I graduate from Meadville Lombard, the threshold I am at has another meaning too, that of saying goodbye to who I was before and the way my life was before. I am completing my time here at CLF as a learning fellow as well. There is a bittersweet quality to no longer being with the congregations, peers, and mentors I have been with on this part of my journey in the way that I have been. And I want to thank all the people that make up the CLF community for making this experience a great one. I didn't know what I was beginning when I applied to be a learning fellow almost two years ago. That moment was another threshold in and of itself. So those in school and those parenting those in school and those who have arrived at this time of year having been schooled, each of us have arrived at a threshold of our own as spring turns into summer. We are all different than we were when we began this year. Whether we are getting ready for a summer after third grade or the parent of a young adult or in our retirement years. There are things to celebrate as we arrive at a threshold, and there are things we are going to miss about who we were until we arrived here at this moment. We get to have all of these feelings at once, excitement, worry, anticipation, lament, and joy. As we each approach our own thresholds, take a breath. Hold on to the memories of the journey, and let's begin the next chapter anew.